Everyone just sitting there, keep your phones in silence. Yeah, he's a bit of a dick like that. Uh, I'm sorry, but he's a lovely man. Uh, you can have your phones on, though, they have to be on silent. You can have them on, because uh, uh, they're on self serving way. We do want you to tweet about tonight at uh, hashtag addictively good. Let me hear it. Addictively <laughs> good. We didn't actually think we'd do that. Uh, God does. Uh, so, uh, it gives me great pleasure right now, I have one more applause, of welcoming you to the very first. Skybox Sex Club! In case you don't know, uh, we are here to talk about the phenomena that are box sets, uh, the social currency of today, and uh, we're going to discuss why they're so addictively good. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, seeing as I'm up here, I think they're addictively good because they feature so many lovable rogues, don't they? They've created a whole new generation of lovable rogues. I mean, you think Tony Soprano, lovable rogue. Don Draper, lovable rogue. Jamie Lannister, chat his sister. Because uh, <laughs> that's the real thing you need to know about Jamie Lannister. But people out there still go, oh, he's a lovable rogue. <laughs> I think if one of your friends started having sex with their sister, you wouldn't react like that. <laughs> Clive's doing what? <laughs> He's having sex with his sister? What a rogue! What a character! Are these his kids? God, they've got lovely tails. <laughs> so, uh, I do love Game of Thrones. Give me a cheer if you love Game of Thrones! <laughs> Brilliant! When you sat there and watched a group of religious fanatics shout, Shame! Shame! At a naked woman as she walks through the street. It is great to get home and watch some Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Just starting out. It's intense. Uh, we're also uh, tonight going to be talking, and I'm sure you've seen a, a terrifying new character on TV recently. Um, it's, a, it's this unscrupulous, gingerhead, self serving billionaire who's trying to convince <laughs> the world that he's a man of the people. But we're not talking about Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you're right to go. Uh, we're talking about David Lewis in, uh, in Billions. Uh, that's something we're going to be talking about tonight. It's very good. And I feel, I feel bad about saying bad things about Donald Trump. It's really, it's not his fault really, is it? Is it? Yes. It is. <laughs> I don't know, I just think, I, I honestly think his hair is a sentient being. Uh, yeah, it's an alien that has latched onto his head and is controlling him to try and bring about Armageddon. Uh, those are my feelings. Someone should just get a broom, try and knock it off. I like to end on the biggest joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen a lot this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet your illustrious panel who are going to be talking box sets tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, well, please welcome to the stage the start of one of the biggest box sets of all time, if not the biggest Game of Thrones actress, the lovely Rose Leslie! <laughs> so much at the moment, Rose. Oh, I'm going to start. Um, I think, well, there's definitely something to be said for, I mean, box sets, the fact that you can interact with everyone else, and um, that you can kind of chat and discuss it with your close mates, or even strangers. Um, but also, I think, like, TV, it's moving to such an incredible rate with it being 
it's awesome that you get the story up within a box set that you don't necessarily get in a cinematic release. You get the 10 episodes in a series, and so you can therefore be with the, the characters and see the development and really kind of get into the kind of nitty gritty side of things when it comes to relationships or personalities. Um, so yeah, I think it gives you that longevity with, <coughs> with the series. I think it's a, it's a really important point because the story arc, the, the, the comparison to movies, because right now we're living in an era where TV production values are equal to that of movies. So the, the, the line between having to go to the cinema or sitting at home and watching a box set has become blurred, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just like the fact that I don't have to watch adverts and I can watch as many as I like mm -hmm. for like entire days and lose parts of my life over it. And not feel guilty. No, no. I literally just go watch now. Watch now. So I don't ever have to wait. I'm really impatient. It works really well for me. Um, what do you think it is that elevates a box set? Because we're sort of talking about the idea that people are really getting into them in a kind of an addictive way. What do you think raises a box set from just sort of like, ah, that's all right, to being addictively good, Kevin? Well, I think a box set is a kind of operatic experience. You know, when you watch a um, traditional TV, you know, walk around, when you get that really irritating cliffhanger at the end, and you've got to wait another week to yeah. find out what happens. Now you settle down and, as I say, you've kind of watched this vast opera and you know at the back of your mind you can cut off at any point. So you say, I'll oh, just watch the end of episode two and I'll go to bed and then you're at episode four and you think, oh, well, I'll watch episode five. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, that, it's, the, it's almost the excitement of knowing that you're in control and that you can watch as much or as little of it as you like. And it's a new way of watching television, it's a new experience, and uh, ironically, I think television has always been a, a kind of water cool subject that everybody talks about, uh, and we would talk about traditional dramas in the same way that we talk about box sets, but somehow or other box sets are, because they're a bigger experience, they're a bigger thing to talk about, and they're spreading in a different way to normal television, they're, they're, it's like kind of organic not via ITV or BBC's advertising system, but by the people. It's kind of de democratic. democratic. Mm -hmm. And in, that, in, in relation to that, the, the idea that you, like you say, you don't have to watch it there and then. People can pick up a box set at any point, like months after its release, years even. I'm I mean, always totally behind on everything. I'll, I'll watch things um, like, like Billions that I just watched the other day. I just binge watched it because someone else told me that it was really, really good. So. It is really good. I spend a lot of time under a slang pit. At the yeah. Week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To everyone, hands up if you got a slang pit. What? Yeah. It's a blanket with sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you still lifting the remote out from under a blanket like an animal? The <laughs> 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 dinosaur. <laughs> they're, they're the future, and sales have gone up. Um, uh, set in Washington in the White House. Yes, scandal. Yes. 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 Uh, Superstars drama started in 1960. Don Draper. Yes. Uh, uh, created by David Lynch, Carl McLaughlin. Uh, yeah, uh, it's Yeah, Wisteria Lane, Terry Henshaw. Teen drama series. Oh yeah, we'll continue. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, give us one more minute. Cause I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. Yeah, I thought it might be. A crime drama set in Miami. He's a serial Better. killer. Yes. Uh, Hugh Laurie plays a doctor. Oh. Oh. Uh,